couple of guest stars. We've got Jack McLaughlin on my right. We've got Evan McDowell on my left. Alongside Bradley Kendall, I'm Jay Smith. This is going to be a special episode, a little bit longer than usual. We're going to do uh, a recap slash preview of the rest of the season. We're halfway through the season, so Bradley, let's go ahead and get it underway after further review. We are halfway there, and there's some teams that are living on a prayer out there. Ooh, yeah, that's, that's a good one. one. That was good. And we'll start off with the ACC. <laughs> yeah. We'll jump right in. We'll jump uh, into conference championships and look at who we want to pick for uh, who's going to take it home. I guess I'll start. Um, right now, the uh, current standings: the Atlantic. We got Clemson six and zero, SC State at five and one in the Coastal. Miami tops at five and zero. Georgia Tech and Virginia Tech are uh, one game behind. Uh, right now, I'm going to stick with Clemson. Uh, I've stuck with them from the very beginning. Uh, the schedule shapes out. They've already got their hard games behind them. Uh, they've looked stronger than arguably any team in the country right now. Their resume shapes up to be probably the number one team when the playoff rankings come out. Um, really, just the defense has been carrying them. Kelly Bryant, a pleasant surprise for the offense. Um, yep. I think the rest of the way, every game so far, maybe except the NC State game, I feel really confident in picking them. So. I'll take Clemson under the ACC. No chance, FSU. Oh, not, no. Not no. on the road, yeah. <laughs> All right. What about you, Adam? Yeah, I'm going to go with Clemson as well. I think this is the, not only the safe and the easy pick, but I think it's the homer pick for all of us here too. Um, obviously got the three top 15 wins in the month of September over, over Auburn, Louisville, and Virginia Tech respectively. Um, like Bradley said, currently first in the ACC Atlantic 4-0 in conference play, also have a win over Virginia Tech. Uh, like Bradley also said, I think their toughest game left is going to be on the road at NC State. That's a tough environment against a pretty good NC State team, and even when NC State's not pretty good, Clemson still seems to struggle with them from time to time. Ryan Finley playing like a Heisman candidate right now, almost 71% completion percentage, over 1,700 yards, 10 touchdowns, zero interceptions. So our defensive secondary is going to be tested in Carter Finley here in a couple weeks. Um, his stats line up similar to Baker Mayfield's, which I guess we'll get into a little bit later with some Heisman talk. Um, but Kelly Bryant has been leading the way again. Pleasant surprise. 67% completion percentage, over 1,200 yards, four touchdowns, four picks, but he's been doing most of his damage on the ground. 97 carries, 400 yards, seven touchdowns. He's the leading rusher on this team right now. I think Clemson across the board is looking really solid, and I think they're the easy pick at this point. For ACC you said he's thrown four interceptions, Kelly has all season? He I'm has. I'm trying to remember in my uh, head. I can't even remember him throwing those four interceptions. I feel like he hasn't turned yeah, the ball they were, over. They were, they, were balls. they were not direct like, interceptions. Yeah, they, they, were weren't, they weren't bad interceptions, not like yeah. his fault. Well, but compared to Sean last year, the interceptions, that's, that's Kelly the biggest, definitely had less. That's one of yeah. the biggest differences, and that's like kind of what Dabo touched on in his press conference today about how we've been so much more consistent with scoring in the red zone, scoring touchdowns in the red zone. I think we're something like on 20 possessions in the red zone, we've red zone we've scored the, uh, 17 touchdowns, which is like 85%. I mean, that's amazing and so much better than last year because, like he pointed out, a lot of our turnovers last year came in the red zone. And when you drive all the way down the field and you come up with no points, not or, only does or it – Or a turnover. Right, yeah, or a yeah, turnover. Yeah, it shoots up the clock, and then you're, you find yourself in a closer game than you otherwise would have been because you weren't able to convert in the red zone. Which well, is what NC State did to us last year, and that's why they almost yes, made up that offer. They'll and, be looking to do that again. Yeah, sure. and, I mean, and I'm going with Clemson. I feel like it's the safe pick for the ACC. I don't think anybody's really going with Miami. They're 4-0 uh, in the other division, but I think the safe pick here is Clemson. They've got two away ACC games left with Syracuse this weekend and NC State, and then two home with Georgia Tech and FSU. They've beaten three ranked teams so far this season. Two of them have been on the road in night games, game day environment. Uh, their average margin of victory right now against the ACC is 20 points. So that's really pretty impressive. Three touchdowns, average margin of victory is uh, pretty impressive. And, I mean, again, we've talked a lot about me and Bradley, especially um, over the course of this season on the show, about how consistent Clemson's been on offense and on defense. It feels like every week they come out and they're able to improve in some category in some way. So, I mean, I, I think right now you have to pick Clemson. Yeah, I, I pick Clemson too. But the one thing that I wanted to mention is that NC State's going to be playing Notre Dame right the week before. And that's going to be a big game for NC State. So – you don't really know how they're going to react. If they have a big game, they beat Notre Dame, then they could be riding pretty high flying into the Clemson game. And that um, could very well be their toughest game of the year, too. Obviously, mm -hmm. Louisville, we've seen not quite the talent that we expect out of them. And Notre Dame's only got one loss, and that's to Georgia, who yeah. is probably the second-best team in the My SEC point. right now. Yeah. And it was yeah. a close game, yeah, in South Bend. the Jack to throw in the Notre Dame comment now. <laughs> I, I just wanted to say, if they, if they win that game, they have a lot of momentum rolling into the Clemson yeah, yeah. game, and that could be True. very dangerous. So. But emotional win coming off that. Might not have it the next week after that. Are those back-to-back -back weeks, too? No game. bye week in between? I believe so, yeah. Okay. Wow. So yeah. Could, real, be, could be tough. Real quick yeah. before we move on to the Big Ten Conference, who do you all have in the ACC championship game? Besides Clemson winning it all, who would you have them playing? I've got Clemson, Virginia Tech. I don't think Miami – I think yeah. they're a little bit overrated, like I said last year, and it's all going to come to fruition later. I think Virginia Tech all around just has a better team, too good of a defense. Miami just – they barely squeaked by Florida State. 
That's true. That, that Florida State game against Miami is a little bit concerning. I've got Clemson Virginia Tech, too. I see a rematch for the third time in the last calendar year. Uh, I, like I said, I just don't think Miami is quite over that hump yet, but I think Mark Rick's got a good, solid foundation in place. I think the Hurricanes will be a force to be reckoned with in the coming years, but yeah. maybe not so much this Do year. Do not count out Georgia Tech, though. I will say that. I'm going to totally disagree, though, with the whole uh, Miami not getting over the hump. I think that this Florida State game, they hadn't beaten them in seven years. They were finally able to get over that. It was an ugly win, but a win's a win. Mm -hmm. And that may be what they need in order to really get the spark going. Clemson's played Virginia Tech on the road at, you know, in a tough environment, you know, a game day, and they throttled them. I mean, they beat right, them but we're not, we're not saying they're going to lose the ACC championship game. That's just I'm just saying that it, it, I still think that in terms of, like, if you had to go to, like, a pecking order of the ACC, I think Virginia Tech right now is the fourth best team. I think NC State has been more impressive than Virginia Tech just with the fact that, you know, again, Virginia Tech has hosted Clemson and hasn't performed well. NC State's played well in all their games so far. They, their only loss has been their season opener to South Carolina, which arguably they should have won. So you really could be sitting right now and be looking at a 6-0 and Clemson team and a 6-0 and NC State team in the same division in the ACC. So for that reason, I'm thinking the Canes play Clemson in the ACC championship. I had, I had Virginia Tech um, coming out of the Coastal. I, I think I looked at their schedule and – it, they basically have a cakewalk until they get to the Miami game. So. And when is that? What weekend is that? Did you have? I don't know if you, does anybody uh, have a date on that. Plays, uh, they play on the fourth, November fourth. Okay. Tech. Okay. Yes. That'd be an interesting one to watch then. That could very well determine the Coastal Division it that week. Probably will. Yeah. yeah. Unless Georgia Tech. Depending on how Georgia Tech does. Right. I gotta watch out for them because they're a game up on Virginia Tech right now. They haven't lost a game yet in the ACC, so they do play Clemson. But, but I think I saw the back the back end of their schedule though, and it gets it's pretty tough, ugly. Tough, but All right. Well, we're gonna let move on and look at the Big Ten. Bradley, why don't you tell us who you got uh, coming out of there? You know, I, I went back and forth a lot because there's three very very good teams. You can even include Michigan and Michigan State in there too. I decided to go with the safe pick. I'm going with Wisconsin. Look at the rest of their schedule coming up. The hardest game they have left is home against Michigan. We saw Michigan is super banged up. Um, they got a lot to go through the rest of the schedule. Uh, but Wisconsin, basically a lock right now, I think, for the Big Ten championship game like they had last year. Um, Penn State, Ohio State, I was going back between them two. I just can't decide which one I like the best this one. I guess maybe Penn State, I favor them a little more. But I just love what Wisconsin's done so far. They're one of the most underrated teams in the country. One of a top five rushing defense, passing efficiency. You know, they, they're not really known for a lot of offense, but efficiency They've been great this year. Uh, I love Paul Chris as a coach. I really think he can lead them back to the Big Ten Championship and get some revenge because they did almost beat what Penn State in the Big Ten Championship game last year. So I like the Badgers. See, I feel like that's not – I mean, I have the same pick. I have Wisconsin as well. But I feel like it's not necessarily the safe pick and then I feel like Penn State, you know, being the number three team in the country, being the odds-on favorite at the beginning of the year, that's probably still the safe pick at this point. Uh, except for that Iowa game, that might be a little concerning with the close score, last second touchdown, that kind of thing. But um, I think the reason Wisconsin will win the Big Ten is because the East is going to beat up on itself too much. And going into a conference championship game, you want to be healthy, you want to be at the top of your game. And I'm just not sure any of these East teams are going to be able to, to rally through their schedule. I mean, in the next four weeks, Penn State's got a bye. Then they got home against Michigan at Ohio State at Michigan State. So that's a tough three weeks in a row for Penn State. I don't know if they survive those three weeks undefeated. And then Ohio State's at Nebraska this week by home against Penn State at Iowa, which we saw Iowa take Penn State to the brink. So you never know how that game could go, especially uh, at Iowa. And then Michigan is at Indiana this week at Penn State, home against Rutgers, home against Minnesota. So really the only tough game in there for Michigan is Penn State. But Michigan's also not as good as they were last year. So I, I just don't see the East. I think those are three really, really good teams. I don't think they're – that good enough to go through the stretch they have coming up and still be able to beat a really good Wisconsin team who um, their toughest game is a home game against Michigan the rest of the year. I think that's a very winnable game. Uh, and I think with Alex Hornibrook playing as well as he has at quarterback, 65% um, completion percentage, over 1,000 yards, 10 touchdowns, four interceptions, and their defense, similar numbers to Clemson's defense, and we all know how good Clemson's defense is, I think it's going to be really tough for any of these teams in the East to not only make it through the rest of their schedule, but also face Wisconsin at the well, end of I it. I think that that just kind of you know, goes back to the depth of the Big Ten. I know we've talked a lot about this season about how you know Big Ten might be the best conference in college football uh, in terms of depth. But for me, I, I have to pick between either of the undefeated teams left with Wisconsin and Penn State. And personally, after you touched on their schedule, Penn State schedule, uh, I'm going with Wisconsin. Uh, you know, one of the things that I really like about the Badgers is that, you know, they're not only are they great rushing offense, I think right now they're 16th in the country. They're averaging over 250 yards rushing per game, but they're also amazing in on defense. They're top 10 in total defense, only giving up 273 yards a game. And they're number four right now in rush defense, only giving up 80 yards a game. So by making your opponent one-dimensional and forcing them to throw the ball, 
and having a balanced attack on offense with being able to run the ball really well. They're, I mean, again, they're averaging over 200 yards passing and over 250 yards rushing. And so I, I feel like with the schedule that Wisconsin has for the remainder of the year, that that's why I'm going to pick the Badgers. Well, and for comparison's sake, just because I wanted to see how the numbers stack up, Clemson's defense, and like we already touched on how good they are, their numbers are almost identical mm -hmm. with Wisconsin's defensive numbers. So Wisconsin, like you said, 273 yards per game. Clemson's defense, 264 yards per game. Yep. 192 passing for Wisconsin, 165 passing for Clemson, uh, 81 rushing for Wisconsin and 98 rushing for Clemson. I, I just think at the end so of the day, very similar Penn State's going to have one. They're going to have a really hard stretch of th two or three games, and they're just not going to make it out alive. And I think it's, it's going to be a cannibalism type thing where Wisconsin, if they can get by, I think their toughest game is at Michigan. Home, home against Michigan. Home, home against Michigan. That's yeah. their last ranked game that they're going to play this year. They're if they can get past that, that which not is – That's not for another month. Right, that's a pretty beat-up Michigan team, although you'd think they'd heal by the time that game comes around. I, more injuries. I like that's the Badgers. But who who yeah. you got, Jack? I got Penn State winning it all in the Big Ten. Probably. So Shocker. Yeah, yeah very so shocked. Pennsylvania my, my argument with Penn State is that Michigan doesn't have their QB when they play. Mm -hmm. So that kind of – that makes it a little bit easier on Penn State, I think, for that first game and that three-game stretch. Um, and I'm not really sold on Michigan's defense yet. Um, some of the offenses that they've played so far this year have been kind of laughable. I mean, I think their best game was Florida, and Florida was missing like half of their starters for that game on offense. Um, and then they played – uh, they played Cincy, Air Force, Purdue. Those aren't really offenses that kind of bring, like, fear into your right. mind. Exactly. So I'm not sold on their defense yet. So I don't know how hard Michigan is really going to play against Penn State. You got the rivalry and all because it's a Big Ten game. But I'm not seeing Michigan as, as big of a threat um, as I think other people are for Penn State. So I think that first game is going to be easier for them. And then the OSU game, the argument is that it's at OSU. That gives them a – that gives them a little bit of an advantage. But Oklahoma's already beaten Ohio State at their place this year. So, and I'm not really, I like, Ohio State's offense hasn't looked the best at times in some of those games. So, I don't really know how their offense is going to do against Penn State's defense. And when you have people like Trace McSorley, Saquon Barkley, who've been playing in those big games for a full year now, and they're used to it, I'm, I have a feeling they're going to step up before some of these young Ohio State players do. Um, so that's why I'm picking Penn State to come out of the Big Ten. I'm not really sure about Michigan State yet. I don't know what to think with them. Might have been a one-game wonder. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I I, so. they, and my, they're just a wild card. You never know what they're going to do. But that's that's my that's my view. I think Penn State can make it out of that three-game stretch, and they're going to win the Big Ten because I think once Definitely they get out of that – deserving champion if they're able to make it through that. Yeah, yeah I think if they make it through I think if they make it through those three games, I think that Wisconsin – I'd feel bad for them if they made it through that three-game stretch and didn't win the Big Ten. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So All that, right. that's why. Well, we're going to go ahead and move on now to the Big 12. We'll start again over with Bradley. Who you got coming out of the Big 12? First year that they've got a conference championship. It's about there. time. And they're going to have probably a rematch. Uh, I got TCU winning the Big 12. Yep. Uh, you know, I looked at, obviously, coming off the loss to Oklahoma, a little bit uh, a little bit uncertain about what they're going to do the rest of the year. Maybe it's just like a little you know, bad day or something like that. But, uh, you know, I got TCU. I love what they did against Oklahoma State. I was really high on Oklahoma State at the beginning of the season. Uh, TCU's defense. Very surprising. Gary Patterson coming off a six and seven year, able to lead his team to a five and zero record. Uh, I think this is the third time after a losing season they've been able to do this. Um, the the offense has been great. Kenny Hill is reigniting his career. They're seventh in points per game allowed, uh, points per game four. Uh, they're running so many more plays and controlling their time of possession, which is yeah. so key when yeah. you get down to those close, like those shootout games, and yeah. be able to control the time. Well, that's how they beat Oklahoma State, holding Absolutely. the ball for almost forty minutes, keeping yeah. Mason Rudolph in check and yeah. able to hold him back. Yeah, uh, their defense has been splendid so far. Did have a really close game against West Virginia, but West Virginia beats so you've seen can be a good team. They almost took down Virginia Tech. Uh, so I guess going down the rest of the schedule, they've got at Oklahoma, which can be kind of tough. I'm predicting they're going to lose to Oklahoma in that first game, but since it's the conference championship it's between the top two teams, I think they'll play them again and eventually beat them in the Big, Big 12 championship. Well, that'd I'm be an interesting rematch. It'll be an interesting rematch. I'll go with TCU. I think they'll split at least once. I'll go with them the second time around. What about you, Evan? I didn't want to pick TCU just because I don't trust them at this point. I feel like this could be the case where a team gets so off to two, a really So two consecutive start. wins against ranked opponents, you don't have any trust? I mean, I trust them in the fact that they can win football games. I don't think they can win the Big 12 championship. I think uh, Who in the Big 12, though, could challenge them? I've got Oklahoma State winning the Big 12. The team that they the beat. The team that TCU beat. So this is like Virginia Tech beating Clemson in the it ACC could championship be, could game. Could be, but Clemson's a lot better than Virginia Tech, and I don't think TCU is that much better than Oklahoma State okay. that they can beat them twice. 
in the same year. Now, so, that game was on the road for TCU. It was. That TCU game was in Stillwater. TCU had a great game plan coming in that game. Shut yep. Mason Rudolph down. Made him look like not a Heisman contender. Uh, so you're, obviously you're going really with good. mullet man. I'm going with Mike Gundy because okay. other than Dabo Sweeney and Mike Leach, he might be my favorite coach <laughs> in I can, I can get the behind NCAA. That. Uh, I can but get behind that. but yeah. I think a, a key thing to keep in mind here, at least for me, is the Big 12 championships between the top two teams in the country. There's no – I mean, not yeah. two teams in the country. The top two teams in the conference, yeah. there's no division. No so that's why I think uh, the winner of – Bedlam is going to be, you know, either Oklahoma State or Oklahoma. I think the winner of that game will be in the Big 12 championship with TCU. I think Oklahoma State beats Oklahoma, and I don't think TCU can beat them twice. I mean, you can shut down Mason Rudolph once, but it's going to be tough to shut him down a second time. Uh, the only only loss Oklahoma State has is well, obviously TCU, but they outgained them in that game. The only reason they lost is because they had four turnovers to TCU. I wouldn't points. say they really shut him down, though, because they, and I'm picking TCU for the Big 12, but they didn't really shut him down. They gave up 31 points, but like Bradley touched on, they've been able to get a lot more snaps off and be more consistently yeah. on offense, and they got right. 44 points out of the game yeah. at, no. on the road. Right. So well, they, didn't, they didn't shut him down defensively. The way they shut him down was keeping him off the field. Their offense right. stayed their, on the field Their offense has just been really consistent. Them. Their offense was even comparable. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Kenny Hill had a great game plan that game. Looking at TCU's schedule, though, uh, I mean, again, they, they have four pretty easy games, although I'm not sure about Iowa State after their win yeah. against Oklahoma. But yeah, you've got Kansas that. State on the road. Uh, you've got Kansas at home. That should be that's a bye. A bye that's week. essentially a bye week. Practice. And you've got at yeah. Iowa State, you've got Texas at home. I think the Oklahoma game on the road will be the biggest test that they face all season. If they're able to get past that hurdle, I think they're a consensus pick for the Big 12 championship. Well, shoot, the week after that, they're on the road at Texas Tech, who's currently ranked right now in a surprising four. I see a 24 next to their, their name, but I, I'm not. That's a tough three-game stretch for them, that though. Is, Texas, yeah. Oklahoma, Texas Tech. Is this game still tough, especially if they get complacent and look ahead? You could argue yeah. it's a tough four-game stretch with Iowa State on the road. Yeah. So, I mean, there, there's a lot. Then you with Baylor. So there's a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, would, we would think, but Oklahoma almost slipped up. There. There's, there's a That's lot true. of work left to be done for the Horned Frogs, but they're the last undefeated team in the Big 12. And right, right now, I feel like you have to give them the nod for that. Right. So, Jack, what are your thoughts? I have Oklahoma State. So, okay. last, few years, last few years, the way I've seen it is – Best QB in the Big 12 Conference usually ends up winning it for his team, which has been Oklahoma with Baker Mayfield. Right. And I think this year, Mason Rudolph, is he's had his he's had a few years kind of learning, and I think this is his year where he's going to win the Big 12. A lot of the arguments that um, Evan said, but I just don't see TCU coming out of that three-game stretch with Texas, Oklahoma, and Texas Tech without two losses. Mm -hmm. um, I just think those are three tough games to go um, back to back to back, and I, I don't really know if I trust TCU at TCU like yet. I yeah. just like it. I don't know why they just seems like they came out of nowhere. They won like two big games and now everybody's like, oh, like they should be top ten. That's that's the, the Washington that Huskies exactly. came out of uh, nowhere a few years ago and then they made the playoff. And obviously, they didn't do well against Alabama. I don't think anybody would have done well against but Alabama. <laughs> but the Huskies are sitting at six and zero oh, and they've Not been pretty consistent the last two years. So yes, they have. Just, you know, Oklahoma State's got a tough stretch coming up too, though, which I think they're going to need to get through. I mean, they got Baylor yeah. this week, so easy week this week. But then they're at Texas, at West Virginia, home against Oklahoma, and then at Iowa. And you State. know Texas. Texas is just waiting to spoil somebody's season. Oh, no. I mean, yeah. their that's season's that's essentially they over, and they they're will. waiting to spoil someone's season. Which they could very well do this week in the Red River rivalry. Now, yep. obviously, Oklahoma just lost last week, but I think a second loss, A, Ooh. definitely knocks them out of the college football playoff, and B, could potentially knock them out of the Big 12 championship game. And then yeah. I think this week is a spoiler, too, for yeah. the rest of the Big This week is a must-win for Oklahoma, but Absolutely. I think it's also a must-win for Texas, so that'll be a fun mm -hmm. game to watch. All right, well, we'll switch it up. Jack, why don't you start us off with the Pac-12? Who you got winning it all there? Uh, I got Washington winning it all, so the way I'm looking at it is the Apple Cup is going to end up deciding who plays yeah. USC yeah. in um, the Pac-12 championship. Mm -hmm. USC's schedule is basically laughable. I, I mean, the, the only teams they're playing are Notre Dame. And I think this is Notre Dame's laughable? Hey, no, yeah, I'm saying everybody but the, Notre Dame oh. is laughable. For the Pac-12. Oh, okay. They do play Utah this week, so... So you, okay, you, yeah, okay, Utah isn't bad. Um, yeah, yeah, but I think the Apple Cup is going to decide it, and I have Washington win that game because mm -hmm. I feel like their offense is a little more balanced than Washington State's is. Luke Falk's a great QB. I think he's going to keep them in that game for sure. But I think that Washington's balanced offense um, and their very good defense, their strong defense, is going to end up winning. It'll be a game that I'm willing to stay up until 2 a.m. to watch oh, the end yeah. of it. I think yeah. it'll be a Absolutely. 10 o'clock kickoff. Yeah. I'm going to go with the Huskies, too, in the Pac-12. They're 6-0. and I haven't been able to watch them as much this year as I was last year. I know last year I was really high on the Huskies. I was. They're 6-0. and 
they have been really impressive looking at their box scores. I think the most points that they've given up is 16 to Fresno State. Their defense is ranked second right now. They've, they given, up, they've given up only a touchdown to three but. teams so far this year. Now, yeah, you could argue that their strength of schedule is pretty weak, but at the same time, they've clobbered everyone they've yeah. played. Mm -hmm. They've been very impressive, very consistent, and as long as they execute well against the teams that they have remaining, I honestly think the toughest game for them remaining on the schedule is at Stanford. This has already been scheduled for a 10:30 kickoff, so it's going to be a night game for them. It's going to be a. For them, it's not a Friday. I right, believe, but so. it's still yeah. a, it's still well, it's a, a night, night game. game. It's still yeah. a night game. Oh, yeah. It's equivalent yeah. to a night game here. Sure. But I think that a road yeah. game for Stanford is going to be tougher for them to come away with a win than a home game for Washington State. I think if, if, if they're able to get past Stanford and they get to the end of the season and Washington State is the only thing sitting between them and an undefeated season and that game is at home, they're going to come out and they're going to play lights out. Mm -hmm. Keep that schedule pulled up. I want to say something about it. I'm going against the grain with this one as well. I'm picking Washington State. I mm. love the Cougars. I love Mike Leach. I love Luke Falk. Yeah, you just all over Mike <laughs> Leach. I have a man crush on Mike Leach. I said before the show that if anybody else ever were to coach Clemson football, past, present, or future, I wanted to be Mike Leach. But I am really high on the Cougars because of uh, Luke Falk. I think he is – he's one of my Heisman candidates. We'll get to that in a little bit. But throwing for 2,000 yards, 19 touchdowns is the lead for the country, and only two picks – along with a 71% completion percentage. Washington State has looked really good this year. They beat USC at home Friday night. A lot of people watching that game, a lot of pressure to win that game. They come, they came out and won it. And I think they're going to win the Apple Cup because at the end of Washington's schedule, what like we just talked about, they have Oregon less than a week later. They have that Friday night game against Stanford. The week after that, they play Utah. And then the week right after that's the Apple Cup. Washington State has a bye week the week before the Apple Cup. That gives Mike Leach and his team two weeks to prepare for the Huskies. So that's why I think they win the Apple Cup, and I think that's why they win the Pac-12. And I wouldn't be shocked if Washington State, if they went undefeated and won the Pac-12, they're in the playoff. And I would love yeah. to see Mike Leach in a playoff game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Give me Mike Leach hosting <laughs> football now. I don't even care how they do in the playoff. I just want to I don't care. I just, oh, man. <laughs> Who are you that picking for the Pac-12? We'll go ahead and wrap Washington. it up. Uh, you know, I was, I was kind of like the oversight was going to go up to the Apple Cup. I was going towards the end of the season. I was really comparing the two teams, Washington and Washington State. Last year, Washington definitely got the best of them. Yep. I love the quarterback play, Luke Falk and Jake Browning, two great quarterbacks. But the one thing that stands out for me, and I did see Washington State's first game of the year, because I did like them preseason. I love Luke Falk. They played Boise State, and they just really struggled. It they did. It was a miraculous yeah. comeback yeah. to come back. And the one thing that was really the pinpoint of it was turnovers. Washington State struggled. Luke Falk, I think, got benched for like a five-minute period because mm -hmm. he was turning the ball over too much. Washington ranks top 15 in turnover margin and top three in scoring defense. Some of that Washington really prided itself on last year because they knew Jake Browning was good. Chris Peterson prided himself on a great defense. And even with the loss in the NFL draft, they're still able to retain a great defense. So I think for that factor, the fact that it's at home, I'll go with Washington. And USC just, they fell apart against nah, Washington. So I, I think they're going to be the best USC. USC. I, so think, I think if Washington, Washington wins the Apple Cup, it's, I think they have a good defense. And I think Washington State's offense is better than them. So you're even there. The, the reason Washington wins the Apple Cup is going to be special teams. It's going to be Dante Pettis returning a punt for a touchdown. Yeah, that's a and that's going to be the difference. And that could be the difference. It it, could be I mean, it may not be like the reason, the sole reason, but that could be the it's difference play in the game. Yeah, it's definitely. Gonna play All it's right, going well, to be like a lot like the TCU Oklahoma State. Well, very, yeah, very quickly, let's go ahead and roll through SEC. We'll start with Jack. Who are you picking out of the South Eastern uh, Conference? I'm picking Bama. I think it's going to be a Bama-Georgia SEC championship. Yep. And I really wanted to pick Georgia in this game, but the idea of probably having a rookie freshman QB playing against that Bama defense that scares hurts. me, and I don't think yep. I'd bet against, bet against uh, uh, Bama in that. And Auburn only put up six points against Clemson's defense this year. I don't see him putting up more points than that against Alabama's defense, and Alabama has scored like yeah. 24 to 30 points on the last few years, so they're going to have to put up points, and I don't see him doing that if they didn't do it against Clemson. I think the only team right now in the SEC that has a chance has a chance at beating Alabama is Georgia. My uh, mind says Alabama, my heart says Georgia, so I'm going with the Bulldogs. I know that's against, against the grain a little bit. I'm sure everybody else at this table has picked the Crimson Tide, uh, but you know, again, looking at their schedule, Georgia should be able to coast through Missouri. Florida at home. They have South Carolina at home, three home games in a row. Then they go on the road to Auburn, finish out the season home against Kentucky, and then on the road against Georgia Tech in clean old-fashioned hate. But I really like the Bulldogs. They've played really well so far this season. Uh, they have a nice road win against Notre Dame. They clobbered. They were all over Tennessee a couple weeks back and played really well against Bandy last week. 
and we know how hot Vandy started the season. I think yeah. they started 4-0, and they've lost their last two games to Bama and Georgia. So I, I'm really high on the Bulldogs. I know that realistically it probably won't happen, but I want it to happen. So for that reason, I'm going Georgia. Yeah, I'm going to go with Bama. I think they stand a better chance of losing the Iron Bowl than they do the SEC Championship to Georgia. I mean, their offense is – Way better than a typical Nick Saban offense like you're used to. Averaging 40 points per game, 483 yards, 81 through the air, or 181 through the air, and 300 rushing yards per game. That's their average. That's insane. Yeah. Um, their defense is just as insane. They're only giving up 10 points a game, 258 yards total, 185 through the air, 73 on the ground. So you're not going to get much out of that defense no matter how good your offense is. But I think after the Clemson game, I think Auburn and Jarrett Stidham kind of getting into a groove now. They – uh, you know, are putting up a lot more points. They just are coming off back-to-back -back wins against Mississippi State and Ole Miss, so sweeping the state of Mississippi there. I think Auburn is going to get hot at the right time. I think that Iron Bowl is going to be a lot more fun to watch than the SEC championship game. I think Jalen Hurts is going to dominate across the board. Uh, he's playing a lot like Kelly Bryant right now in that he's not throwing for as many yards of touchdowns, but he's doing a lot of his damage on the ground. He's got 517 rushing yards and five touchdowns on the ground this year. I just don't think – uh, Georgia stands a chance against Bama, like I said. If they are going to lose, it's going to be that Iron Bowl, but I don't even think they lose that. Who are you so picking, Brad? Bama Georgia goes easy. to Auburn. If they can get out of that against a great defense like uh, Auburn has, I'll be a little more impressed. Right now, i got to stick with Bama, though. Mm. Georgia really prides itself on the run. Nick Chubb and Sony Michelle are great one-two punch. Alabama's the number one rushing defense in the entire country. Yeah. So, yeah. for that factor, the freshman quarterback comes into play. You know, they're talking about even And you saw how well they shut down Fournette and other great running backs oh, in the yeah. past. Didn't and Alabama's run defense They're even talking about bringing ungodly. Jacob Eason in to take over oh, Jake's running spot, which That's if the that worst even is a debate, Kirby Smart mm, could do. they're going to have the Cowboys effect. They're uh -uh. just going to completely blow Don't up. Yeah. That, yeah. But that, I'm going to take the safe pick. Alabama's playing. They're playing mean, which is something you do not they want are. to see from Nick Saban. Yeah, so, I'll go with Bama. All right, well, we spent about the last half hour going over our Power Five uh, championship predictions and who we think is going to win. Now let's jump into some Heisman hopefuls. I know that there's been a lot of shakeup in the Heisman board uh, now that we're halfway through the season. So, Bradley, we'll start with you. Who you got number one and, I guess, number two or number three on your Heisman board? Well, Sam Darnold. He's not even on this uh, list. No. I'm not even going to mention it. He's completely falling off the face of the earth. I got Bryce Love, number one, the uh, running back from Stanford. Ooh. Unfortunately, I think for the real Heisman voters, he's not going to get much love, you could say, because he's on the <laughs> West Coast and they don't play him as much. Lead in the country. I don't also. know if I buy that. That whole West Coast thing doesn't get. Hey, McCaffrey didn't if, get if Christian McCaffrey's not going yeah, to Christian Heisman, didn't get it over Derrick Henry. Bryce Love did break Christian yeah. McCaffrey's single game record, though, with 300 rushing yards against Arizona State, yep. and he leads the country in rushing. Yep. He literally has double the yards that Saquon Berkeley has right now. With the same amount of touchdowns and a great yards per carry. I know you're not going to be too happy about that. But, uh, sticking to the uh, Pac-12 second, I got Luke Falk. Uh, 2,000 passing yards this year, 19 touchdowns, only two interceptions. Leading a top-10 team right now, something that the Heisman voters like to see, a winning team. Uh, and then third, I'm going to slide in Saquon Barkley only because he has eight touchdowns. Literally carried the team when they played Iowa and basically won them the game. And he plays on the top three team right now. So I'll give him Saquon Barkley third. Evan, who you got? Your uh, I got a different top three but a similar top four to Bradley. So my number one, Luke Falk. I already told you how much I love Washington State, love Luke Falk, love Mike Leach. He's top five in the country right now in terms of completion percentage, yards, and passing touchdowns. Fifth in completion percentage, third in yards, first in passing touchdowns. What is his completion Only percentage? Did picks. you mention that? 71.8. 71.8. I didn't write it down. I just wrote it down. Okay. I was just country. curious. I was yeah. just curious. <laughs> so very efficient passer there. Uh, and as we've seen, this has kind of turned into a quarterback or running back award in previous years. Yep. Uh, second, I have Baker Mayfield. I think he's been playing really well this year, and Oklahoma's only going to go as far as he's going to take him. He's actually got a better completion percentage than Luke Falk. He leads the country. He does, 74.6, if I'm remembering correctly. Tied for 17th in yards. That doesn't really matter because a lot of people are jumbled right there in the middle. Uh, tied for 8th in touchdowns, and the big number here, zero interceptions so far. So I think if Baker really Mayfield impressive. keeps playing on that high level, you're going to see him in New York. Third, I have Saquon Barkley just because of all the preseason hype and how well he played last year. Um, but as far as the numbers are concerned, this year he is definitely not the leading statistical running back in college football right now. Only 649 yards on the ground. However, he is a good receiving back, 29 receptions, 395 yards, two touchdowns receiving-wise. He's only rushed for more than 100 yards twice this year, 172 versus Akron in the season opener. And like Bradley said, that Iowa yards. game yeah. came 211, 211 yards. yards. So I have him third, and then I have Bryce Love fourth. I love. I think Bryce Love is a really good running back, but again, that West Coast bias is going to come into play, so that's why I have him all the way down at fourth. So I think he might get an invite to New York, but I don't think he stands a realistic chance of winning at this point. For me, at number one, I got Baker Mayfield, and I know that Oklahoma lost to Iowa State last Saturday, but here's the thing. Baker Mayfield can't play defense, too. He can only do what he can do on offense. He has a 75% completion rate, which is better than your boy Luke Falk. That's true. He's got 15 touchdowns, and he has zero interceptions. Baker Mayfield – 
love him or hate him, most people hate him, myself kind of included, as much as it pains me to say this, right now is one of the best quarterbacks in the country. He's playing like the best quarterback in the country, and I know that they did not play well defensively against Iowa State, but I don't think that you can discredit Mayfield and his performance all season well, in he's just doing, one He's game. doing all this without some of the better college football yeah. receivers we've seen yeah. in the past couple yeah. years in Sterling Shepard and D.D. Westbrook. At two, though, I have – at two and three, I have two running backs. At number two, I have Bryce Love for Stanford. Uh, he is averaging 207 yards per game, which is first in the FBS. He's actually beating a Navy running back in yards per game. <laughs> that is saying something. He is beating a Navy running back in yards per game by, I think, 33 yards. I, so I guess, that won't last long. Se yeah, long. second place right now is like 180. But he is – what's amazing is he, right now he is averaging 10.5 yards per carry. This actually – went down from last week. He was averaging 11.1 .1 yards per carry. He has 16 runs of 30 yards or more, and over the previous two seasons, the most all year was 13. He has already surpassed that halfway through the year. He has averaged double digits, uh, double digit like running totals, and or double digit yards per carry in three out of his six games. His lowest total in yards per carry so far this year is 7.6 yards. And he's played good teams. And he's, yeah, yeah, they've played yeah. good teams. So that's why if I had to pick a running back, I'd pick Bryce Love. At three, though, I have Saquon Barkley. He's only averaging 108 yards per game. I say that as if only. But, you know, when you compare, it to, when you compare it to Bryce Love, I mean, Bryce Love just looks superior. And, and going back to Barkley, he's only averaging six and a half yards per carry. So, yes, he's looked spectacular in some games. But I just feel like when you look at Bryce Love, and just everything that he's been able to do at Stanford against the teams that they've played, that's why I would have him over Saquon Barkley. But I still feel like right now, because of Baker Mayfield's performance at quarterback, that he – that's who I would pick to win the Heisman. So I have Saquon Barkley as my top front runner and for the Penn Heisman. State winning the Big Ten. Yep. <laughs> no bias. So, no, there isn't. So like you guys said, he's not putting up like video game numbers right now, but I will say I think he's – had some of the most flashy plays and like most impressive oh, yeah. plays so far this year from any college well, football player. That's probably the most realistic choice because it's a popularity contest at this point. And, yeah. and Baker Mayfield isn't popular. No, you, you just said <laughs> he's a lot notorious. Of hate him. But he's notorious. I mean, I understand that like a lot of people have dislike have won the Heisman in the past couple of years. Okay, so you have Jameis Winston, maybe. Yeah, USC I mean, anybody players. from Alabama and USC is a villain. Let's be honest here. Bush is cheating. He got it. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but yeah. I understand. Tell me that. I understand your point, though. <laughs> Yeah, but he's had quite a few flashy plays where you watch it and you're just like, how did he do that? You're going to tune into a Penn State game just so you can watch exactly. it. Exactly. Right. Um, yeah. And he's got a passing touchdown to his name. Um, I just <laughs> yeah. thought I'd say that. He's got that over Bryce Love right now. <laughs> I might get one vote. Fair. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. He's got a kick return touchdown too. Yes, he has. He's basically done it every every different way at this point. Um, so you're picking him based solely on the glamorous plays, not necessarily the consistency. You're more about – Well, I, well I, what I was going to say is that he hasn't put up big numbers yet, but – a, what a lot of the viewers like to see is how you play in the big games, and he hasn't really played in too many big games so far. True. The one big game yeah. that he's played was Iowa. He had 211 yards rushing and almost yeah. 100 yards and in he receiving. Heard of a guy. And that yeah. game was on and the he road. Heard of a guy. And that was on the road on at road. Iowa. So he played big in that game. Well, after this week, he'll have a chance for those those big exactly. games. Exactly, that's Iowa, what I was going to say. Michigan, he plays Washington. all these big teams these next few weeks. So I think these next few weeks are really going to tell if he's going to win the Heisman or not. I think if he plays well in all those games, I think. He should have the Heisman, and it should be his unless somebody right. else just takes it from it at the very last second. Well, you're not going to win the Heisman in October, but you could very easily lose yeah. the Heisman exactly. in October. Yes, so, um, and I think that that plays a big part, um, and, like, just all those big games, I think that will can only he help him. Him. And then At two, you had another quarter or running back? I had Bryce Love at two, and my biggest thing with Bryce Love is that he's, he's on the West Coast, and – I just do not see – if Christian McCaffrey didn't win it last year over Derrick Henry, I don't know how Bryce Love can get it over Saquon Barkley. I just don't see it. I mean, I think Christian McCaffrey should have won it last year. I don't even think two he ran quite – Yeah, two years Lamar, ago. Lamar yeah, sorry. But, well, Lamar um, should have won it last year. Let's I will say, say if we're seeing even that. last year with Lamar, stats can win you the Heisman Trophy. So if Bryce Love – Well, he was he also had quite video a, game. He like also he had did. quite a few well, flashy yeah, plays like that people just kept plays. rewinding and rewinding, and everybody's just like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. But – um. They showed that spin move on every ESPN intro for like a year yeah. after the fact. Mm -hmm. Or that hurdle ball. over the series. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. ACC yeah. uses it in their commercials now. Yeah. Like it's all over. You're right, though. Flashy yeah. plays. And the one thing that I have to compare Bryce Love with Saquon Barkley, their two big games, Iowa's defense was ranked 57th. They were letting people get 146 r rushing yards on them per average. Bryce Love had 160 yards against USC, who was 55th in rush defense. Um, so he had uh, like 40, 50 yards less. Um, 
and they were basically the same rushing defense rank. So that's just something that you can consider. I don't know how you can kind of take it with a grain of salt, but it's just something you can e at least look at. But you feel like both running backs that you've mentioned with uh, Barkley and Love have a better chance than, say, a quarterback like Luke Falk or Baker Mayfield? Yeah, well, Baker Mayfield's my third. Um, part of the reason I have him in there is uh, just because he planted the flag against Ohio State. I thought that that was <laughs> perfect. But, oh, and um, Iowa State players playing the Iowa yeah, flag? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But, um, <laughs> well, that's true. But I do think Baker Mayfield's a very good quarterback. I mean, you guys have said all the stats. He's got, like, 16 touchdowns, no interceptions. He's playing really good football right yeah. now. Um, but right now, I think that it's between those two running backs and the quarterbacks are kind of on the outside looking in. So we're going what position, Bradley? I had uh, Bryce Love, running back. Running back? Quarterback. Quarterback. Running back. Running back. It's Interesting. amazing. The beginning of the year, we said it was a quarterback year. Yeah. yeah. No way a running back was. Well, well you've got guys like Josh number. Allen yeah. and there was another fellow that I had. Josh Rosen? Yeah, Josh that have Rosen. not Nobody played has well. Not Nobody has played a well. All right, well, we got about 10 minutes left to wrap up this show. We're going to go into some playoff predictions, go give our top four who we think's in right now, and then I guess like the first two or first four out here we want to structure this. Bradley, we'll go ahead and start with you. Who you got? Who's in for you? They're going to look very similar between now and later. I got Clemson number one right now, most deserving, best resume. Two, yep. I got Alabama. Haven't seen anything otherwise that tells me to move them down. Three, Washington, like I said, balanced attack. They're great efficiently, offensively, mm -hmm. defensively. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'd say Penn State's four, but I think towards the end of the year, that schedule's going to catch up to them. And I, the safe pick for me would say Wisconsin. I think Wisconsin's going to sneak their way into four, so that'll be my final four, including Wisconsin. Uh, my, this, this four that I came up with is based on right now, and I'll tell you how it's going to change towards the end of the year. But right now, I have Alabama at number one. Uh, they're number one in the AP poll, and I think the only reason that they're not going to be number one anymore is if they lose – because um, I don't think it matters at this point how badly Alabama might play and still win and how well Clemson might play and still win. I think the fact that Alabama is number one, they're going to be number one until somebody gives them a reason to not be number yeah. one anymore. Yeah. So Alabama one, Clemson at two, pretty self-explanatory there. They should be number one, but, again, you're not going to unseat Alabama until they lose. Right now, I've got Georgia at number three because I think they are playing some really good football. Uh, they've got a really good win over currently ranked Notre Dame, and that was in South Bend. So really good win there. And just for some context, that was Fromm's first road start yeah. as a freshman wow. quarterback. So that might be Kelly quite Bryant did pretty good on his first road start, too, if I remember correctly. Did he? he might have. I don't know who they play again. Who was it? Louisville? Is that a reigning Heisman? I, I think that guy won the Heisman team? last year. Did he? Yeah, I, what? I think he did. And then he played <laughs> uh, on the road against that Virginia Tech team. And did he? Oh, and ran all over the field. Night, yeah, I mean, no, that, that, that Kelly Bryant. Wait, the good. Sandstorm? The Sandstorm people? Really? The best interest in college football? <laughs> what? I, I think uh, that Kelly Bryant guy, he's <laughs> Heisman hopeful. At number four right now, I've got TCU. I just think their body of work after that, that big win in Stillwater, I think, propels them into the top four. Penn State, just on the outside looking in for right now, just because they don't have that signature win. Yes, they have a good road win at Iowa, but it took a touchdown on fourth and goal and time expired for them to win that game. So that didn't really convince me of their ability to perform in a playoff game as of yet. Uh, I have Wisconsin at six. Like I talked about earlier, they have really good defense, and Hornerbrook playing really good at the quarterback position, and they could very well get in at the end of the year. Washington State at seven. Luke Falk, enough said. I've already covered this enough. And then I have Auburn at eight, just because I think maybe if they mm -hmm. win out the rest of the year and win the Iron Bowl and the SEC championship, they could sneak in. I don't really think that's happening. So as of right now, I have Alabama, Clemson, Georgia, TCU. Obviously, that's going to be subject to change. I think the final four you're going to be looking at somewhere, maybe Alabama and Clemson, some combination of one and two. I think – the winner of the Big Ten is going to be in there. It's either going to be Penn State or Wisconsin. I think if Washington State wins out, they could be number four. I don't Ooh. really see it happening. I would love to. Uh, but I think that number four team will probably be the Big 12 champion or the Pac-12 champion, depending on who wins out and how that goes. But keep an eye on that. All right, well, my top four, uh, I feel like Clemson is – I know they're not number one in the polls, but I feel like they've played uh, – the, the, they have played the toughest strength of schedule so far this year. They've also really impressed me. So I got Clemson at one. I got Alabama at two. I feel like those two right now are a lock. The only way that that changes is if they lose a game. So that's pretty self-explanatory. Number three, and I did a little last-minute rearranging, but I'm going to go Washington. They've played really well so far this season. If they can keep that up and, you know, finish out the season strong, I think that they can get home with the Pac-12 championship, and they'll be at three. And then four for me, I'm going with Wisconsin. Uh, I know that we've gone back and forth about who's going to win the Big Ten and, 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 you know, will it be Penn State or will it be Wisconsin. Sure. Uh, but I think the Badgers will get it done. Just I think it was uh, uh, based off of – uh, the reason I picked Wisconsin, I think, was based off of the schedule. The Penn State had a, had a, had a much yeah. tougher schedule to finish the year, if I recall correctly. So I got Wisconsin at four. Um, at five for me, though, the first one, first team out, I got Georgia. Uh, they played really well 
this year. And I know I picked them for my SEC championship. I think at the end of the day, realistically, that Alabama's probably going to win that game. And Georgia's a great team that probably, if they were in another conference, could make it into the playoff. But because they play Alabama in the SEC championship, championship game, they'll probably get bumped down to five. Uh, six, I have Penn State. Seven, I got TCU. And eight, I know you're really high on Mike Leach, but I got Washington okay, State baby. in there. And, and honestly, for Washington State and Washington to finish in the top eight at the end of the year would be an amazing achievement for mm -hmm. Washington football. Because when is the last time you have heard of they Washington? Got throttled by Alabama. Yeah, of Washington playoff. football. So that, that would be a statement for that entire state if they were able to have two teams in the top eight or the, even the top ten by the end of the year. And I'll, I'll, I'll chug a Red Bull. I'll chug a Red Bull and watch that Apple Cup. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't know. I didn't even know the Apple Cup was a thing until a few years ago. But both teams yeah. have definitely started to become more prominent, and they've made the Apple it's Cup almost entertaining what to watch and something you want to see. The Palmetto Bowl was a few years back when Spurrier was still at Carolina, and then, and then Carolina was you know really good. I would say good. it's even better than that because Carolina was that good. Carolina was a top ten team that year or those years, but Clemson really wasn't. Yeah, and I don't think it took the, Clemson a while. The disparity was a little bit. You know, the, it's I almost like the Mississippi State, uh, oh, the, the, egg egg, bowl. the Egg Bowl, the egg even bowl though both teams, I think, ended up getting Zach busted Prescott, for Chad recruiting Kelly. violations. But, yeah, well, I mean, yeah. when they were way that up. That was I think, a fun game. Though. Yeah. yeah. That yeah, one game. But. <laughs> so my uh, top four are Bama, Clemson, Penn State, and Washington. So those are four I have getting in. Um, for, like, a while there I had Penn State ahead of Clemson just because – I think that there's a lot of hate against Clemson, especially in the um, ESPN people. I don't think that they really like Clemson very much. They'll drop them any, any, chance, that, any chance that they get. So um, I think after if Penn State gets through that stretch of three and they win all those games, I think they're going to put Penn State ahead of Clemson. I would not be surprised if it happens. So this, is, this isn't this is my rankings. It's what I expect the right. playoff people will yeah. do. Um, but So I technically have Clemson at two, Penn State at three, but I would not be surprised if they end up switching those two up. Um, and Washington at four. Um, after they beat after they beat Washington State in the Apple Cup, uh, they'll play USC. Hopefully, kick their butts. And then those will be two pretty good games to end the season for them. And they'll that'll help them kind of push them into the playoff. And then I have OK State sitting on the outside looking in, winning the Big Twelve. But um, that one loss um, to TCU I think is going to haunt them. Um, and I think that's what's going to keep them out. And then I have Georgia. Ohio State, Oklahoma, rounding out the top eight. So we've got, if, if, I, if I remember correctly, does everybody here have the Big 12 looking from the yeah. outside in? Yeah. I think, so. I think I we've, got, we've got an ACC team, we've got an SEC team, we've got a Pac-12 team, and a Big 10 yeah. team. Yeah. And I, I, I have some, to agree. There's some disparity between Who's who gonna comes win? out of those conferences. I think the biggest yes. disparity is your Pac-12 and your Big 10. Yeah. I think those are the only question marks left. I think you pretty much have locked down your ACC. No, yeah, I think the You've locked down your SEC. Big, Pac Big 10. Big well, 10. I think that Big 12 is your question mark looking at who's going to get into the playoff. Cause let's no, I don't say, think they're going to get into the playoff. Did you pick a team from the Big 12 to get into the playoff? I have TCU at four well, right now at four. this point in the year, but I think at the end okay. of the year, like I said, if Washington State wins out or if Washington wins out, if either one of them went out and win yeah. Pac-12, I think they get in over TCU because yeah. I think the Pac-12 from top to bottom is a better conference than the Big 12. So right that now. conference championship may not even really help. No, no, I actually, I actually read not an article this earlier that said yeah. it might. Yeah. Just because of who's already lost with Oklahoma and Oklahoma mm -hmm. State, because you kind of thought one of them would be, yeah, yeah. Uh, at the least one of them would be you've undefeated got, headed you've in You've got one game. undefeated team left. So it was and Texas. Oh, or in well, the conference. In conference. In conference well, we're talking overall. Oh, yeah, a yeah, two-loss yeah. Texas is not. Aren't they two-loss? Texas is two-loss. Yeah. They might have even hurt in conference at a conference championship game. This year, One of their undefeated teams could end up losing. Could lose, yeah. No, for sure. Well, I don't know. There's a lot of uh, football left to be played. We've got six more weeks, and we've got conference championships, and then we've got bowl games, and then we've got a lot of good finals. football. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it, around Christmas time is when it really starts getting good. Well, we appreciate you sticking with us for the entirety of the show. It has been a pleasure to bring it to you. For Evan McDowell, Jack McLaughlin, and Bradley Kendall, I'm Jay Smith, and this has been After Further Review. Thanks for watching.